Grab your Bibles real quick and open them to Luke's Gospel, chapter 17. And as you're turning there, um, last Sunday I began a message connected with Israel and God's pro prophetic plan. And uh, part two is a heavy, it's a heavy message. And we're going to get to that next week because this week the Lord kind of whispered something to me to remind us all about. And it's found housed in a portion of Scripture there in Luke's Gospel, chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. And just for the next few minutes, let's talk about living a thankful life. I mean, this entire service with songs that we have sung and things that we have said have all pointed toward the faithfulness of God. And when He looks down at us as His children, He, he loves us so much. And there's one thing within His will that, that He definitely wants us to have, and that is a, a thankful life. A thankful life. The Word of God says this, as, as Jesus continued on towards Jerusalem, he reached the border between Galilee and Samaria. As he entered a village there, ten men with leprosy stood at a distance, crying out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. He looked at them and said, Go show yourselves to the priest." And as they went, they were cleansed of their leprosy. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, came back to Jesus shouting, Praise God! He fell to the ground at Jesus' feet, thanking him for what he had done. This man was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, Didn't I heal ten men? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And Jesus said to the man, Stand up and go. Your faith has healed you. I don't know about you, but, but I want to be like the one. Come on, somebody. I want to be like the one. Father, would you touch us and... Bless us through breaking of bread of your holy word today and speak to our lives once again about it, what it means to live a thankful life. I praise you for your holy word that is anointed already. And as your servant, I simply ask that you will anoint me as well to speak only those things that you have, have given to me to share with my church family today. It's all because of Jesus. And we're so thankful to you, Lord. And everybody say amen and amen. Amen. I want to start with a question for us today, and, and here it is. What kind of lifestyle do you want to live? What kind of lifestyle do you want to have? Well, I believe without, without any doubt that Deep down, each and every one of us, we want to have a healthy lifestyle. Amen, somebody? A, a healthy lifestyle. Regardless of our age, we all want to stay energetic. Isn't that a true statement? The majority of us would say, I, I, I want to eat nutritionally. And many of you might say, oh, pastor, don't go there. You're meddling right now. And I get it, because I have to fight with that little Prius's steering wheel every time I pass a McDonald's for whatever reason. That car wants to go in through the drive through I don't know what it is, but I, I have to fight against that. By the way, look at your neighbor and say, the last few days don't count. <laughs> yeah. But there again, we, we all, I believe, want to have a healthy lifestyle. And this in many ways leads us to another lifestyle that I believe everyone desires. 
And that is the fact that a healthy lifestyle is the first step towards an active lifestyle. We all want to stay productive regardless of how old we are. We, we want to have the energy to continue to do the things that we enjoy, such as mingling with our family and our friends, interacting with our co-workers and our team members, exercising and making the most of life, staying active. Somebody say amen. Staying active, having an active lifestyle. And the truth is, we, we all want to be healthy, and we want to stay active. Then there are other lifestyles that we can consider. Some want to live the rural lifestyle. Some of us grew up in the country, and we enjoy living that kind of lifestyle, where, uh, as others want the urban lifestyle. Some people who are introverted, they, they uh, live a solo lifestyle, whereas others who are extroverted, they want the social lifestyle. There are artistic individuals who want the bohemian lifestyle. There are risk takers who want the adventurous lifestyle. There are tech savvy people who love the digital lifestyle and on and on and on we can go discussing different desired lifestyle. But then for us as Christians this morning, there, there is that Christ-like lifestyle. Somebody say amen. The Christian lifestyle. And as followers of Jesus, those who have been radically changed, as Paul put it in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, the, the old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. One thing that each of us have learned is that the Christian walk is a lifestyle of giving thanks. Sister Kim reminded us last week as well as today that we don't have to wait for a holiday to give God some thanks and to give Him praise. He's worthy every day that we live. Yes, we respect and we acknowledge special calendar days like Thanksgiving, but the truth is this, for Christians, giving thanks to God should happen every day. Giving thanks to God happens every day. Now here's another question for us. How many of us this morning want to be in the will of God? The will of God. To live our life according to God's will. To have our desires line up with what God desires for us. Well, here is what the Word says. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will, the, the tehilma the desire and determined outcome, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. The New Living Translation puts it, puts it this way, no matter, no matter what happens, always be thankful. I was waiting on that amen. The Word says, no matter what happens, Brother Diaz, always be thankful. For this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. I remind us that God is omniscient, meaning that He sees and knows everything. He knew our past before we did. He knows our present before we did. We do. And he always sees and already sees our future before we can. And it's in all of these areas that his determined will for us is that we live thankful life. No matter what happens, always be thankful. Say that to your neighbor. No matter what happens, 
always. Now, brothers and sisters, this is an intentional action on our part. Because as we all know, life wants to drag us down. The enemy wants to steal, kill, and destroy. Things happen at times that are very uncomfortable and unexpected. But no matter what happens, we can always give God's thanks. Because it's not only His desire for us, but it is, it is His will for His children to be thankful. As Joyce Meyer has put it, you, you've heard this, always have that attitude of gratitude. Come on, somebody. Always be thankful. Well, in Luke 17, verses 11 through 19, Jesus encounters a group of lepers. The text says again this, as Jesus continued on toward Jerusalem, he reached the border between Galilee and Samaria. Now, as he entered that village there, ten men, the word says, ten men with what? With leprosy. Ten men who were social outcasts. Totally forbidden from mingling with others according to Leviticus chapter 13. They were scorned by everyone because of being unclean. They were excluded, they were prohibited, and they were banned from approaching anyone in public. These ten men knew the pain of rejection. That pain had crept into their hearts so much so that they didn't even approach Jesus. They had heard that Jesus was approachable, but they didn't approach him on this day. They did this instead. The Bible says they stood at a distance crying out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And I'm thankful to say that Jesus did not reject them, but instead he responded to their cries. This is the character of Jesus. He doesn't push anyone away, but rather he pulls others in. That's what happened on this day. He didn't push the lepers away, but he pulled them in. Aren't you glad this morning that Jesus pulled you in and he didn't push you away? Thank God that Jesus didn't reject us. He himself even put it this way in John 6 and 37, those the Father has given me will come to me and I will never Reject them. On this occasion, he didn't reject the rejected of his day, but the word says he looked at them and said, Go show yourselves to the priest. This had to be exciting for these men, these lepers to hear. Presenting themselves to the priest was something that they had longed for. They had longed for that day where they would be clean again to be reunited with their families and reunited in public socially. They had longed to hear those words and presenting themselves to the priest they knew would mean several things. Number one, there would be a sacrifice offered on their behalf, the leper's behalf. Here's what would happen, brothers and sisters. The priest would take two birds. In fact, I'm going to tell you what kind of birds they were. The priest would take two sparrows, the least expensive of all required sacrifice. Matthew 10 and 29 says that two sparrows were sold for one copper coin or one penny. But Luke in Luke 12 and 6 records that five sparrows were, were to be sold for two pennies. 
You see, sparrows were always the bargain basement discounted sacrifice. In the account of someone buying five sparrows, Matthew said two could be bought for one penny. Luke says that five could be bought for two pennies. And so what that meant was that that fifth sparrow would be free because in many ways sparrows were looked at and considered to be totally worthless. But let me remind us of something again this morning, something very important. What some consider to be worthless is what our Heavenly Father cares about and He values. Jesus said this, Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside your Father's care. And even the very hairs of your head are all numbers so don't be afraid you are worth more than many sparrows look at your neighbor and say God values you he values us as his children somebody might have spoke over your life you'll never add up you're going to be worthless the rest of your life but I'm here to erase that lie from the pit of hell God has placed value you on each and every one of us this morning and we are the children of the most high God hallelujah thank you Jesus that priest would take one of the sparrows and then sacrifice it kill it in an earthen vessel over running water he would then take the living sparrow along with cedar wood and scarlet and hyssop, and he would dip them and the living sparrow in the blood of the sacrificed one, and then the priest would sprinkle the shed blood on the leper seven times times and then he would release that bloody bird in the air and that signified that that leper had received his cleansing how many of you are are so thankful for the shed blood of Jesus that has not only cleansed but it's totally covered us and we're set free indeed because of the sacrifice of our Lord Now with that sacrifice, the priest was proclaiming that the leper was cleansed. And these ten men knew all about that from the old covenant. And again, they had longed for the day that they could do this. And thank God that day came for them. Jesus told them to go present yourself to the priest. The text then says this, and, and as they went. Come on, read it aloud with me. And as they went, they were cleansed of their leprosy. Now this week I took another long look at the Gospels, and I realized that there are 26 times that Jesus did a healing that it was recorded specifically, that he did a healing, that the healing came immediately. Now we know that there were many more than 26 because many times Jesus would go into a city and he would heal everyone in the entire city. In fact, Dr. Luke said if we recorded everything that Jesus did, it would fill this entire earth with a library of record of what Jesus accomplished during his ministry. But 26 specific healings that Jesus did that happen instantaneously, immediately. But then there was one that from the text it seems as if it was a progressive miracle. It was a miracle of healing that took place not necessarily instantaneously, but it took upon hearing from Jesus some faith in the life of these ten lepers. Now listen, these ten lepers, 
They had colonized themselves together because of their malady and their disease. Can I tell you that every bar room here in Charlotte, you're going to find, well, hopefully you're not going to find, <laughs> but if we were to go in, we would see individuals that, that are hurting and desperate who are gathered together with other individuals who are hurting and desperate. Our streets here in Charlotte are filled with homeless people who are hurting and desperate, who have, in a sense, colonized themselves together. They have found others that, that, that can relate to their pain, and that's who they're hanging around. But thank God on this day, faith began to arise in the hearts of these men and the word says as they went I don't know if it was within the first step that they took in going toward the temple or if it was midway during the course of their journey there or the very last step before entering into the door and presenting themselves to the priest but regardless of when it was the miracle of healing took place because as they went they were cleansed of their leprosy. Can I remind us that some things we just have to walk out with the Lord's help. It's a process. Some of you have been holding on to the Lord for your healing for a long time and it hasn't happened immediately but can I just tell you hold on to the promise of Jesus because what he said he will do he will do but sometimes you've just got to walk it out and Robert it's a process you hold on to the word of Jesus Healing is on its way. I believe that he still heals today. That he's able to touch and do exceedingly abundantly above anything we ask or think according to the power of God working in us. Some things we just have to walk out, brothers and sisters, with the Lord's help. And it's a process. I'm living through some process right now, but I haven't given up on the promise of God. I, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting. It's been days and weeks and months and even years, but yet I'm holding on to the promise of the Lord be, because it's a process. I'm, I'm, I'm in the process right now. I'm, I'm walking it out and I'm trusting God with every step. It's a process. But he's promised it, and it's going to happen. The word then says, and Rob began to play softly, please. It says, one of them, huh? one of them, when he saw that he was healed, came back to Jesus shouting, praise God. Notice what he did. He fell to the ground at Jesus' feet. In other words, he, he fell down prostrate before the Lord. He felt so unworthy that he had received such a great gift. And his expression was that he fell at the feet of Jesus and he thanked him for what he had done. The word says this man was a Samaritan. He was a foreigner. He's a half-breed. Hated by the Jews, but thank, thank God Jesus. Jesus loved him regardless of where he came. Can I tell you, Jesus loves us regardless of our past, regardless of where we came from. He loves you. Jesus asked, didn't I heal ten men? Hmm. Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give... Glory to God, except this foreigner. And Jesus said to the man, stand up and go. Your faith has healed you. Living a thankful life is something, again, that's God's will for each and every one of us. Wouldn't it be a shame if we liken these ten men and the one that came to give God thanks. Wouldn't it be tragic if that were 
true of this church that only 10% of our church family on any given day gives God thanks. Now, I know that that's not the case. Come on, somebody. Because when we wake up in the morning, I don't know about you, but, but Jesus is on my mind. And, he, and He's given me the rest that I need, Brother Cherry, and supplied everything that my family needs. And I can't help but praise Him. And most of all, not just for what He's done, but who He is to me. He's my, my Savior, my, my Redeemer, my, my Lord, my, my soon-coming King. I can't help but praise Him. can't help but praise Him. I, Richard, I want to be like that one leper every single day of my life. I want to give Jesus thanks. I want to fall at His feet humble myself before Him and just express how dependent I am on Him every moment of every living day that I have. I want to give Him thanks. And here's, I believe, what the Lord spoke to me in closing out this service of this week of thanksgiving that we've had of expressing that we are to live that thankful life. I want everybody to stand, please. And if you're physically able, if you're physically able, would you join me down front in this altar area for a time of prayer and something that I believe that the Lord wants us to do together this morning? Would you join me? Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. When you get down here, just shoot your hands up if you're comfortable in doing that just shoot your hands up in submission and just give give Jesus some thanks give God some glory in the house and just just begin with your mouths and with your tongue and with your words from your heart just thank him for who he is and what he has done thank you that you touch this old leper you touch me Jesus I didn't have leprosy physically. I wasn't, I wasn't cursed with that malady or that disease physically. But spiritually, I was a leper. And you, you found me, Jesus. And you cleansed me. And you set me free. And I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you, Jesus. I want my life, oh Lord, to be pleasing to you. I want to be in your will, God. I want to be in your will. So in everything that I encounter, no matter what happens, I'm going to always give you thanks. When surprises come my way that are painful, God, give me that spirit of thanksgiving that will give you praise in the midst of even the storms of life because you're faithful. And you'll see me through. God, help us. Help us to live that lifestyle of thanksgiving. That lifestyle of giving you thanks. God, that's the lifestyle that we want. That's the lifestyle as your people that we want. We confess that afresh and anew today. And as we're entering into a beautiful beautiful time of the year where we'll once again celebrate you Jesus coming Lord I just pray that you'll fill our hearts with thanksgiving and fill us full and running over oh God with joy God with joy knowing Lord that you you are ours and we are yours Lord we thank you we thank you we thank you we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you thanks. Listen, now, I want you just to gently lay your hand on someone close to you and just, just pray a prayer of blessing over their life. Father, I just pray, Lord, that you will bless my brother, that you will lay your hand upon him, God, that 
the work of his hands that is dedicated and submitted to you that you will bless him with fruitfulness God the seed that he has sown oh Lord that your word declares that that there are some that receive 30 some 60 some a hundredfold blessing God, I pray that hundredfold blessing over my brother's life and everything that he sets his hands to do for your honor and glory. May it prosper. May it be blessed. God, I just ask you, Lord, in Jesus' name. And I thank you for doing this. For doing this for my brothers and my sisters. God, here at Eastway. Lord, bless each and every one. I pray. Bless every home, every house. Those who are viewing God, bless them. Every household, Lord, represented here in this service today, bless us. But God, most of all, bless us with that heart of thanksgiving. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know if anyone here, anyone else did this this week, but on, on Thursday as our family, 19 of us were gathered together and, and uh, we just gave opportunity for anyone who wanted to, to just to say something that, that the Lord had done for them this year that they were thankful for. And without hesitation, people began to speak up. My cousin Max, for example, who just recently had COVID pneumonia and he has come through cancer and so he was desperate for, for the touch of the Lord. And while he was on the ventilator, Sister Addie, he began to quote in his mind Psalm 91. And he said as he quoted that psalm, the Lord touched him and he felt from the top of his head throughout his toes, he said, I felt the healing warmth and I began to shake all over and the next day he came off that ventilator and the following day he went home others began to speak up and so as we're closing out this morning and you who have joined us by means of live, st live stream do this with your family members too if the Lord has blessed you and you want to give testimony of that blessing, I want you to take a moment, find two, at least two people, and tell them something that the Lord did for you during 2023 that you're thankful for. And we're going to close out the service in that way. Can we do that? God bless you. Thank you for joining us. May you be blessed this week. Have a great week in the Lord. In Jesus' name, tell somebody something you're thankful for. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you this morning.